G'day, g'day. Um, my name is Benny Wallington, and I'm um, super grateful, very, very grateful to be here with you all for the Worldwide Wonder, this amazing event. And I'd just love to start just by um, connecting everyone a little bit, just with a, a quick breath. It's 6 a.m. here, and uh, yeah, get on the Brady Bunch view if you haven't got it up in the top right hand corner, just so you can see everyone's face. Nice. See Rachel with a big smile there on a walk already, already getting started. So yeah, I'd just love you to, if you're walking or even if you're sitting, just a, just a nice deep breath in together. Inhale. And a long exhale. So we'll do one more and we'll do a sigh this time. Just a big inhale in. And if you feel like sighing, sigh. Awesome. It's as much for me as it is for you getting up early and dropping into a global connection. Uh, I'm, I'm super stoked, super stoked to be here. Uh, this is my third worldwide wonder, but this is the, definitely the biggest one. This is the biggest one for sure. Uh, and I'm stoked to have been invited on this journey with you all. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this 24 hour mega relay, uh, celebrating mornings around the world with um, the legends at Street Wisdom and also Creative Mornings. So I'm calling in live from Bunjalung country, which is in a place called Mullumbimby in Australia. And I'd love to acknowledge uh, the Bunjalung folks. I'd like to acknowledge the land of which I'm sitting on. And it's really important here um, to not just say the words, but to feel them and to, to actually acknowledge country. So I'm gonna acknowledge we've had wild rains again. We've had some pretty hectic flooding and um, there's been, been some wild rains in the kickoff over in the US as well. And, and I know we've got Mexico coming up. We're dealing with, dealing with some um, earthquakes as well. And so I just want to acknowledge country here for its resilience and the animals and in particular, the magpies and the horse flies who don't get too good of a run. Um, but I have a special, special part in my heart for those, those, those fellas. Wow, okay. This collaboration between Creative Mornings and Street Wisdom. First time I got introduced to David Pearl, the founder of Street Wisdom, was in 2014. And he came into my college in South London in Brixton, probably the motherland for me, um, and taught us about singing. And what really connected this group together was, we're not gonna sing, don't worry, don't freak out, it's all good. The breathing was enough. Um, what connected us all was resonance. And that was really what I took away. And, and then getting to experience street wisdom and hearing all about uh, creative mornings uh, all around the world is that resonance and that thing that we feel when we connect to the other through sound, through breath, through walking and to the animate forces around us, which are ever present in the street. Cool. I got to hear from Tina as well. That was awesome this morning. So shout out to Tina. She's around, the founder of Creative Mornings, uh, which is a heart forward community that spans the globe in 224 cities and 67 countries. Bringing together, that together with Street Wisdom, which I've been involved in for about eight years now, which is rad. It just makes a whole lot of sense that you, you guys are collaborating and co-creating and, uh, and this being the sixth session of the Worldwide Wonder, we'll be spending the next hour and a half together or hour and 24 minutes, um, exploring our imaginations, hearts, minds, opening them up. And this is what I'd call exploring the frothy edge. Frothy is a bit of surf lingo. Where there's a battle between the West Coast of Australia and the East Coast of the US as to who first coined the term frothy. Probably wasn't either of them, to be honest. I think it's been around since the 14th century, but there's a claim sort of on it from the surfing, surfing um, and snowboarding arenas. And I love the word because where the froth lives is where it might, it might spill over, but actually that's where the best stuff happens, right? That's where the froth exists. And I feel like street wisdom is a, an example of, of froth. So, at the heart of this experience is what we call a workshop. Heaps of puns with street wisdom. Sounds like 
there's a fair few puns at Creative Mornings as well. I was going to change my name to Benny Walkington, but I thought that might be a bit of a dad joke. So we'll see. Maybe we'll put a poll up later. Um, so basically a walk shop. We're going to get up and walk. We're going to get up and walk outside. If you can't walk outside, it's all good. So you can do this. We did this COVID marooned. David came and did a, a session for, for, for a little crew of people that I put together after the hectic bushfires here. A lot of the work I do is in um, connection through conversation and, and yarning. And uh, it was just as beautiful to walk around your, your living room and pick up things and observe and, and drop in. So there's so much creativity in, in the things that we've got. I've got a retro surfboard um, and a questionable picture. That's not mine. Uh, using, a different, <laughs> using a different office today. So awesome. Let's have a good look at everyone. If everyone's not already on Brady Bunch, I mentioned it before. Uh, I'd love to see everyone's faces if they can turn their camera on, if they're in a, in a spot where that's okay. It's totally cool if you can't. Philip's given the thumbs up. We've got some waving from Kim, Amanda, Laura, Anna. Anna, Ann, beautiful. Awesome. Thank you for being here as well. I know David's looking out for people who are wearing like the funniest pajamas and that kind of stuff. So I'm a bit of a party shirt connoisseur. So this is as Larry as I get. But um, yeah, if you've got something that you'd like to show an animate being within your, check out this lamp. Yeah, that's pretty good. Anyway, I wouldn't recommend walking around with a lamp. That's not gonna be very helpful, but. Anyway, I'd also like to uh, say good day to everyone who's tuning in from YouTube on the live stream. You're all with us as well. And I know there's uh, the tech team looking after to you, to you. So if you've got any comments, feel free to chuck them in. And of course, we're recording all of this because it's going to be like an extension of the archive of street wisdom and creative mornings journals that will last forever and carved into tablets for all of time, potentially. I'm not sure about that. They didn't tell me that one, but Sounds pretty probable. So I'd love to just invite you to get the best out of this beautiful experience. And yeah, share your views with the world. If you're gonna go for a cruise, uh, flip your camera around so we can like as much as your faces are so beautiful, flip your camera around, show us what you're actually, yeah, there you go. Yeah, on it. Yeah, Rachel, loving those triangles. So who would have thought? Um, anyway, so yeah, I think what we're gonna do is, um, is uh, jump to a, a quick video. Yeah, that looks good. I'm getting the nods from the crew. So um, we're back with you in a moment. Thanks for coming. I'm Marianne, and I am doing the Camino Francaise. It's a path from Saint Jean Pied de Port to Santiago de Compostela, uh, and uh, it's simple. You get up, you walk, you eat, rest, you eat, you sleep, <laughs> and you carry, if you're able, your belongings on your back. As you walk get tired 24 to 29 kilometers a day however you relax you smile <laughs> you can smile smile with me and breathe and relax into your body and then notice and uh, you keep walking so it's not about A to B it's about what you experience from A to B uh, and the sky there's always the sky There's, there's so much to see, and even if it's like wheat fields and just very simple, the sky is always changing, the color of blue, if you do a 360, I try occasionally to do a little 360, just look around, just ah, uh, just spin around, and uh, look at the sky and the various colors of the sky, um, and the changing clouds, and the changing vegetation, and, and I haven't even gotten to the people, and they're rest. Amazing. <laughs> was cro crossing the Pyrenees, and you know, you read in the guidebook that it's the most amazing day, stunning views, and 
it was raining and foggy. So I'm looking out in the fog and somebody's taking pictures and I'm like, oh, you, what do you see that I don't see? And, and, and then we start to imagine the views, using, utilizing our imagination. <laughs> Look at that view. <laughs> And then you engage with people from all over the world um, and uh, with good humor and laughter and um, joy. Well, that hey, was I, spectacular. Hey, Benny, yeah, can I tell I, you something? Can I tell you something, Benny? Yeah, I've, I'm, yeah, I've got to, I've got to, um, I've got to give a beautiful introduction. I feel like that was kind of like just an <laughs> amazing surprise. Like, who was this lady? And then I, I was supposed to give a beautiful introduction. I can tell you. <laughs> can I tell you? Can I tell you? Got, yeah, go for it if you want to. Yeah, if you want to share it. So just to let you all know, hello, everybody. This is Philip from Street Wisdom. Um, so we have a guest at the beginning of every session. And, basic, and we've got like, you know, we've got, we've got incredible names that loads of people know. And then basically we've got my friend, Mary Ann Duffy, you know, who is very well known by all her friends and family. Um, she's just the most magical person uh, I've, 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 been the, I've been so lucky to meet over the last couple of years. She's a laughter yoga teacher. And she's just right now live, literally live as we speak, is walking the Camino de Santiago, um, this incredible sacred pilgrim route in, uh, in Spain. And, and just her insights there, I just think, as you as you saw, just incredible. So I just wanted to sort of big up Marianne Duffy, and I know that her friends are watching on the YouTube. So uh, um, hello to all her friends as well. Um, she's she's a well well you know she's world famous to us. Um, <laughs> but she she, uh, she felt very. She said to me, she felt very honoured to be part of the Worldwide Wonder. So I just wanted to say that. Amazing. Well, I think everything happens for a reason. So me. Uh you know, launching the waffle copter and missing the intro was so much better to hear from you, Philip, because you have that direct connection with Marianne. And uh, that's that's super special. So I'm glad that happened. Good job, me, for stuffing up. Um, and what a video. I don't think, I think we all know people who smile that much and we wish we could smile that much. But I mean, maybe today's the day that we can smile that much. So let's, let's see how we go. Thank you, Marianne. And I'm looking forward to connecting with Marianne now. So I think she's got a few more fans. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we now have the, uh, I now have the pleasure to, to pass over to Creative Mornings HQ team in Auckland, the remarkable Carista. So I'm gonna pass over to Carista. Thank you so much, Benny. And I'm um, gonna show a couple of objects that I have. I have a piece of vintage coral here, which reminds me of the ocean and the beach. I also am just setting the mood. I have a candle here and some Palo Santo burning. So just trying to really get present and into the energy. And I just want to also say um, what a beautiful video from Mary Ann Duffy. I love how she encourages us to, you know, when we're walking, um, you know, just to smile and to breathe and to relax our bodies and to notice what a, what a beautiful piece of advice. Um, and again, I'm Krista McDonald. I am the partnerships manager here at Creative Mornings. I have been with this thought forward, heart forward organization for six months, but it feels like it's been years. I, I feel part of a, a family, a large global family. And I am reporting to you, uh, not from Auckland, but we will be talking to someone in Auckland eventually, but from Brooklyn. Um, Greenpoint to be exact. And I'm just grateful to be here in your presence. And how magical is this that we get to do this together? I have the absolute pleasure of representing the communities waking up at this hour. So thank you for waking up with us. Uh, for this wander, it's Creative Mornings New Zealand chapters to be exact. So we have Wellington, as you see here, they are very engaged in this talk, as you can see. And we also have Auckland. Look at the beautiful ceramics wheel throwing in the background. It makes me want to take a, a ceramics class. How stunning is that? And just want to say, you know, I'm just so happy to see everyone and that you're waking up with us. I know some people it's, it's nighttime, some people it's morning, afternoon. Again, we're just here together in this presence. And if you're curious what cities are participating in this 24-hour wander, 
you can go to www.theworldwidewander.com. And if you haven't already, we want to see where you're calling in from. So please rename yourself with the city you're in or just share in the chat, whatever's easiest in this moment. And now I want to expand on why we call Creative Mornings the engine of generosity, or as Tina has coined uh, that beautiful tagline for this organization, and essentially what makes our events so special, warm, and welcoming. Every single month, usually on a Friday, because who doesn't love a Friday? I like to say that a lot. A crew of hundreds of volunteers roll out of their beds bright and early, working tireless to put on an event for their community. That means organizing the speakers, the volunteers, coffee, and maybe even coffee mugs as seen here. We're, we're also sustainable, we try to be. Um, breakfast, venues, partners, and other special elements that make the event just special for their community, a gift for the community. And what's really important and, and what I wanna really underline is that these events are free. Yes, free and accessible to all. Um, Look here, this is our Honolulu chapter doing what we do best, just having fun. Who doesn't love um, a photo op? And we here at Creative Mornings, and I can probably say Street Wisdom feels the exact same way, you know, believe that everyone truly is creative. We're all meant to create. We all have something unique and special to offer to the world, especially this gentleman and the unicorn he's sitting on. And in some cities, you'll have the opportunity to pitch an idea. Uh, you know, to pitch a business to the entire room, to hear a local musician like you're seeing here in Austin, or find a special someone to collaborate, a friend, um, when you're in need. There's something for everyone, and you're guaranteed to be surrounded by a diverse group of really interesting, impactful, um, warm, and generous individuals. And if you travel, hands up if you like to travel. Um, part of your itinerary can be to discover a Creative Mornings event in over 200 cities, yes, 200 cities, and nearly 70 countries around the world. So that's a sneak peek into how we dance here at Creative Mornings. And if you don't have a local chapter, we strongly encourage you to start one. Um, you can read more on our website, creativemornings.com, scroll all the way to the bottom, of the page and click the start a chapter link. And now you all are in for a special treat. There's lots of treats within this event, um, but we actually have Laura Carrison here from our Auckland chapter joining us live. Um, and I would love to say hi to Laura. Kia ora, Krista, and kia ora, Koto. So, um, kia ora is our um, Indigenous Māori language, um, our way of saying hello, I hope you're well. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for being here. So beautiful. So I wanted to kick off with just a few questions. Um, yeah. How did you get involved in Creative Mornings? Um, I moved up to Tamaki Makoto, Auckland um, as, a, as a uni student to study uni in about 2013. And um, a friend of mine was volunteering at Creative Mornings and I knew nobody in the city. I knew nothing, like no way of kind of getting my foot in the door. And so she took me along and I was just immediately drank the Kool-Aid and, and came along. So I would attend events as much as I could um, until about 2017, 18, when I began volunteering and helping, helping the team. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Creative Mornings tends to be that, you know, web of connecting people, especially when we're feeling, you know, lonely. I think it's a great resource just to be able to create that community. So thanks for sharing that. Um, and I, it seems you've probably been to a lot of events. Uh, and for those individuals on this wander, uh, can you, do you have like a particular event that sticks in your mind or maybe um, something you've taken away from an event that really, you know, pulled on your heartstrings that you can share with us? Yes, so many, <laughs> um, but to, there's so many, but um, to pick one, one of my favorite events um, was actually our first in-person event back from, you know, COVID and, and virtual events, which was um, last year, we had an incredible artist called Kate Hursthouse um, join us for the matriarch theme, and um, Kate's a, a single mother, and she spoke about her journey as both an artist, businesswoman, and mother and how all of those things kind of intersected and, and related to each other. And it just felt like such a special event, firstly, to 
be gathering in person again and then to have um I, th I think what what's beautiful about creative mornings is that our speakers can be vulnerable and they can really share kind of heartfelt stories and that one's always stuck with me as as the perfect example of that yeah thank you for I feel like the first in-person event it was just like music to all of our souls um and I think you know the vulnerability piece is just key in connecting people right when we're vulnerable we make that yeah. immediate connection so thanks for sharing that <laughs> um and then you know, today, are there any questions like you're seeking answers for on your wander or as you're sitting, I think in maybe in your home, I didn't even ask you where you were. <laughs> Is there anything that yeah, like, on your mind or you're pondering that you'd like to share with <laughs> this lovely group? It's such a big question. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, I'm not wondering. I could get out there now, but it's been a very foggy, it's been a very foggy morning in Auckland. So um, it's clearing up now. Um, one, one thing, I, I don't know what the question is, in it is but um a book that i recently read is called humankind a hopeful history it's mm. by a dutch historian um rutger brigman and i may have butchered uh, his name so apologies <laughs> um but what i really love about the book is it goes through our like the history of humanity and and how inherently good most of humanity is and and, and human nature and so i guess the kind of wondering for me is how can we just continue to celebrate the good and kind of uplift that hope a lot um and it's kind of just been ticking over in my in my brain as to what that looks like on a daily basis as well as in the bigger conversations that yeah. we have yeah that's so beautiful and <laughs> even the simplest things I think can provide kindness for people um yeah thank you so much for being here we're so appreciative of everything that you do and for supporting mm -hmm. you know creative mornings and for being here today um yeah it's such beautiful words really thank you for sharing and now I'm gonna pass the walk for the baton back to Benny thank you that's a great yarn I've never been to a creative morning session and I definitely am getting fired up to see what's going down so uh yeah thank you so much for those insights and um yeah, like I said, really excited to check it out one day. So I think it's what everyone's been waiting for. It's about time. Any drum roll? Is there a drum roll that comes on? I can just tap on. Okay, it's uh it's time to, to kick off our workshop. Uh again, we're gonna be using our imaginations, um, exploring, opening up the heart, opening up our all the cells in our bodies connect to find that resonance to find that frothy edge so make sure you're tuning in uh, from your phone it would be ideal if you can um, you can sort of get away with it if you're just doing it in the in the in the home uh, with the laptop but if you're on the phone make sure you got your phone uh, turned around so we can see where you're cruising yeah I'm starting to see some some cool imagery come through um, beautiful make sure you got your shoes on well yeah, maybe that's a, a, a health and safety issue. Uh, so yeah, make sure you get your shoes on, but it is good to ground as well. If you don't have them, just watch yourself. Uh, make sure you get your headphones and your backup battery pack if you if you have one of those and um, get ready and head outside wherever you are. And if you are just jamming at home, um, please take your video off. That's one request that we do have, even though I'm sure you have fantastic living rooms. Cool. So you're in for an absolute treat. Uh, I'm very excited and pumped to pass it over now to our fantastic street wisdom facilitator based in Canada. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm getting I'm getting it right this time. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> and passing it over to Anna Look. So hey Thank Anna. Thank you. Thanks, Benny. Nice to uh, to meet you and everybody on the call today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and uh, it is just a pleasure to be here. I am very excited about that, and I'm thankful, Benny, for your introduction to your territory when you first came on, because it's something that I am learning to do now, based here in Canada, and I've been in Canada for 18 years, originally a Brit, as you may hear from my accent, but I am a little bit all over the place, so it may be a little different to determine, but I wanted to start by letting you know that I'm in Edmonton, which is in Alberta, um, the second province in the West in Canada. 
And Edmonton is in Treaty 6 territory, which is in Métis homelands and the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 4. And we acknowledge that this land is the traditional territories of many First Nations, such as Cree, Dene, Satutasu, Inishirabi, and the Blackfoot peoples. And as I learn more and more about this place that I'm bringing up my family and understanding the cultural roots that we have, it's really important. So I'm, I'm very pleased to share that with you today. So thank you for bringing me to your uh, living rooms, your bedrooms, wherever you are waking up this morning or, or doing your day to talk to you about street wisdom, because this is a relatively new practice that I have stumbled across and Philip knows very well, I am a big component of serendipity and I needed street wisdom and this practice in my life. And I did not know anything about it until I came across a wonderful podcast that introduced me to the wild and wacky David Pearl, who just filled my heart with, I don't know, enthusiasm in just half an hour of listening to him. And then I read his book. So if you have not read his book, wonderful, amazing just really need to do that. And it will give you an insight into more of what this is all about. And so I read his book and um, at the time I was on vacation in another uh, area of Canada in a small ski resort that has summer operations because it's summer over here. And um, there wasn't much of an urban area for me to be able to test this out, but there was one small urban street in in this ski area that had a number of different shops and restaurants. And I thought, I wonder if this is buzzing enough to be able to pick up on what street wisdom is supposed to tune into for you. And sure enough, I went out with a quest on my own one evening after I put the kids to bed, tested this out, and I got the most profound realization or answer to a thing that I'd been pondering about for so long that it just nearly knocked me over. And I thought, oh God, this is real. There's something about this. So within a few weeks, I contacted Philip and said, I would like to run one of these for my peeps in Edmonton, see if I can start spreading this message. And I've been doing that since. So this is my first virtual street wisdom or workshop. So um, I'm looking forward to this. So I need to, I've kind of been hinting at that through this little story I just gave you, but I do need to give you a bit of um, more background on what this whole concept is all about for those of you that, uh, that don't know. So street wisdom is all about recognizing that the streets around us, the urban areas that we are either living in daily or, or go and visit, um, they have a lot of answers within them if we're open to a different form of uh, communication or sensing what is there. And it's uh, interesting that often in our daily busy lives of running around that we're not necessarily in the right space to pick up on those signs. And it takes a bit of retuning, as it were, to get to the place where you can do that more readily. And believe me, I was one of those. I was uh, literally 24 seven constantly, never used to leave the house without a podcast in my ear or something that was teaching me something or a meeting that I was supposed to be half being in. And walking in silence was just something that I haven't done for probably 10 years. And it was a very interesting concept to get back into this in this approach. So we often think and we do use the streets as A to B, you know, we're taking the kids to school or we're walking from our place of office to where we park. And within those, those A to B walks, um, we don't necessarily have the mind doing much else other than thinking about where the next destination is. Um, but what, we're, what we can realize now and what we can utilize is this new way of picking up on, on answers. There's, there's things buried and scurried away, just doesn't take much to reveal them as long as you know how. So this practice is great because once you've got it nailed, you can literally dial it up at any time you want. It's completely free. It doesn't need a password. You don't have to go through a thousand different logins to get to it. It just has to be in here. And if you do forget, it's on the website and you can listen to the lovely tones of David Pearl walking you through it. So there's really no excuse. It is just accessible to no end. So those uh, pieces that I was uh, talking about, those kind of secret pieces are what is the framework. But what you're really doing is taking yourself for a walk and instead of letting it be led by the top of your body, your head, your mind, the thing that normally is very much governing everything, 
you're going to start to embody instead. And I literally did not really know that word or that concept, um, but I think I did when I was younger, which is very strange. It's almost like you're born with this intention and then you lose it as life takes over. So the body is the one that really can take your decisions. It can make you gut decisions. It can help persuade and lead in a way that you might not necessarily know is even happening if you recognize it. And so a workshop is allowing your body to take the lead. So it gives the brain a rest, the mind that works at this point, probably 18 hours a day, but it is a little bit of a switch that needs to be made to allow that to happen. So with street wisdom, you are feeling things, sensing things. Yes, you're seeing them, but you may also be picking up on a lot of the other pieces that are all around you and your five senses are going to come in together. And what we are realizing now is that we're basically going back in time as to what our ancestors used to use. I mean, everything about survival was your instincts and it was your entirety. So hopefully we're gonna get a little bit more uh, intuitive, a little bit cleverer, and not everything is going to be about what we read, what we listen to in our ears constantly, but it can be literally what we feel and what the environment around us is telling us. Um, so that in a nutshell is what a workshop is. Um, and I think better when I move. I've always done that. I think better when I go for a run or when I do Zumba. I didn't realize that I would think better when I slowed down and walked, but it does definitely work. So that gives you a bit of an insight there. Um, there is a huge movement, as we've, as you've heard, as you know now, um, Street Wisdom is in 84 different countries and counting. I hope after this marathon, we're going to be like at 100 by next year, that we should be for sure. Um, and it works for everybody in any stage of life. So if you're a young person making those critical decisions or feeling like you've got to in life, if you're a CEO working and you're needing to make some decisions on behalf of your teams, if you're a working mom, if you're anyone that's got some kind of nagging decision or something that just seems to keep reoccurring into the brain that doesn't manage to get that answer, you can try this and see if it will work for you. Um, so the three parts to the Street Wisdom Workshop is broken up into the tune-ups. So that's gonna be a section that we'll go through to really get the, um, the senses, as I was hinting out there, ready for this piece. Then the main part is the quest. So this is the question, the piece that you are bringing, um, and you may not have a quest set yet or, a, or a, a question to take with you on this, but it will come. Um, and as I say, if it, if it doesn't, you have this practice to be able to use when it does come to you. And then once the quest has occurred, because you're doing workshops in a, in a, in a group generally, the, then the, the final and the best part is the sharing. It's the learning, it's the, it's the enthusiasm of what you've, uh, occur, what's occurred to you and how do you um, share that and interpret that with others that are in the group. So we'll do that part um, after. Now, Benny, you set up some great guidelines there. I'm just gonna repeat them for, for people. Um, as we go through this process, if you are going to be going outside, you'll need to switch to your phones, which I see some of you already have, and we would love it for your cameras to face outwards so we can go on the journey with you. If you're staying at home and you're wandering within your four walls, um, I know I was on one earlier where David suggested a great um, idea there, just to take, turn the camera off, turn the screen off, listen and, uh, and give your eyes that break. Um, to the instructions and everything that we do, it will be um, voice monitored through myself. And once we have uh, started up on our, our tune-ups, you don't have to worry about the time because that's why I have my phone timer next to me so that we can go through all of this and hopefully still keep on track for the, the timing. So before we get going, um, let's just take some awareness down to the bottom of our bodies where we're going to if we are lucky enough to have able body to feet uh, we're going to do the walk so let's just have a little moment of attention to the grounding feeling feeling of the weight on your feet and that sort of itchy feeling to get going and just be grateful and thankful for this opportunity
So as I had uh, mentioned here, we are going to do um, tune-ups. So there's three parts. We've got the first one, um, which we'll go through, and then it will be the same process in, in each one, but just with different instructions. So I'm going to give you the instruction, and then we'll give you two to three minutes to be able to take that instruction with you um, and to go through the tune-up session. So the timepiece is going to be with me, and the first one um, that we will do will give you a good idea of how this is going to work. So the intro um, to tune-up number one, and they're always done in the same order whenever you do this practice, if you're doing it virtually on your own or in, in a group later on, um, is that you are going to be thinking about what you're drawn to and what attracts you. So the simple instruction to repeat in your mind, and we'll also have it come up in the chat instructions as well, is be drawn to what attracts you and notice what doesn't. So that could be a scent, it could be a series of different colors that you see in front of you, it could be shapes, but you are needing to be drawn to what attracts you and notice what doesn't. And when you wander off and start this tune up, um, I'm hoping that you're gonna feel like you can embody that kind of childlike sense that we, we had when we were younger, where we could so easily be distracted by, I don't know if you're at the circus, the smell of candy floss or, you saw something glittering. I know my daughter is everything pink and glitter is where she's going to have her attraction to. So this is what we're going to lead with now on tune up number one. And we will head off now for three minutes to go on this first one.
Okay, so we're uh, coming to the end there of the first tune-up. I'm excited to see what Kyle's dog is finding that she or he is drawn to. <laughs> I love uh, I love being able to follow a canine. They are just the epitome. If only we could all think like that, it would be amazing. So I'm hoping that when you uh, took that little stroll there, that uh, that wander, that you uh, saw some beauty and you also recognized what maybe you weren't attracted to so much. And um, yeah, I'm loving being able to see the different seasons play out here as well. And I forgot to mention that when we started, of course, we're right there. Oh, it's Ginger. Okay. Hi, Ginger. Perfect name. Um, that obviously here in, in Canada, we are heading uh, into our fall. So we're at that time where those school walks are beautifully bright and crisp, but a little chilly. Uh, and of course, I believe you there in the Southern Hemisphere heading into your spring, which will be full of buds and wonderful, I'm sure. So that was tune up number one. And I hope that that uh, gave you a, a good sense of what this is about and starting to notice things slightly differently. So how about the, the next one? Ready to, uh, to take on the next challenge. And this one, in all honesty, was the most difficult for me and still is because of my uh, natural tendencies. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the energy from the last tune up. Um, and this one is really simple, it sounds it just in its title, but it's not so easy to do. So what you're going to do is slow right down. So that's slow right down. I even struggle to speak slowly to introduce this one, but it's an art where if you can just take everything down by a tempo that's not your normal pace, that would be your walking, the way that you have your arms and legs moving in unison, the way your hands would, would slow at your sides, the way you even turn your head to look at things in a more slow and precise manner. Um, can you slow down the rate you're blinking? Can you, I know David's uh, question on here, can you slow the speed at which your hair grows? Uh, it's, it's not that easy, but it's a skill that can be learned. So for the next three minutes, um, we are going to take those words literally. Um, slow our breathing if we can, start to uh, take the full length of time if we were going to go across a crosswalk while the, uh, the numbers are counting down or the hand is flashing, um, take everything to the utmost limits of stretching out that time and seeing what that awakens and what that uh, allows us to notice. And with this piece here, we are going to go back on to a timer. So I will let you go off now in your slow motion tune up number two.
Okay, so we've completed tune up number two. I wonder how that felt. Uh, maybe a little uncomfortable at first, potentially feeling a little uh, conscious of uh, the pace and how you looked in your new found sort of slowness. I'm wondering how Ginger did, because I know my dogs never used to uh, slow down very readily. So that one is an interesting one and hopefully opened up some great awareness there. So we're moving on to our third one. So this is our final tune up to prepare for the quest. And I'm guessing you're ready and uh, willing to give this one your all. So this one is entitled, See the Beauty in Everything. And it's fact really um, about seeing, but also sensing the beauty in everything. Um, because it's not just what you're seeing, it's also, it's the feeling, it's the noticing, and it's all the senses that can decide if something is beautiful or not. And sometimes this means looking at something that you wouldn't obviously find beautiful and seeing it in a different way and being able to tune into um, a, a more appealing feeling towards that. Um, and I loved the, the guidance that sometimes this requires a lens of gratitude. So thinking about something, um, maybe if I turned around right now and opened my basement office door, I would see a pile of kids toys and would not be something so appealing to me. But if I looked at this with gratitude, with knowing how creative my kids are when they play together, their imaginations, and just knowing that everything is scattered where it is because it's been a huge imaginary restaurant, it makes me feel a little bit more, uh, more appealed to those toys scattered across the floor. So it's similar to this on our quest. We're looking at things, maybe uh, a piece of gum on the sidewalk, if you're in your house, maybe a pile of papers that you've not tidied up for the longest time. Um, something in um, on your walk that is maybe a graffiti on a lamppost. How do we see that in a different way with beauty? And so that uh, beaming that gratitude on everything. Um, let's go off for our last uh, tune up here for three minutes and see what we can sense.
Okay, so we've uh, come to the end of our tune-up, which means that we have completed the, the first section. Congratulations. Hoping you're feeling uh, a little more three-dimensional now. Um, I can imagine you're picking up on all sorts of things that are around you that maybe you've walked past many, many times before and haven't felt that, uh, that awakening. And the data that's going to be coming at you as we continue this now should be thick and fast and different to what you're used to. So uh, it can be quite emotional experience I have found and I've uh, led these before. And so be open to whatever comes your way. And we take a moment now just to sort of have that transition period because I want to set you up for the quest with a little bit of background about what that is and how to how to be in the right mind frame for it. So um, not only are you receiving information, but you're also giving it out as well at this point. Um, and it's really interesting when you read David Pearl's book on some of the experiences that have happened all over the globe. Um, where this doesn't have to be a quest that's in isolation. You don't just have to do it from the senses and the things that you're picking up yourself. You can also involve those that you come across on the street. You can ask people for certain guidance. You can ask them your question and see what they have to say about that. If there's people around that look as if they are ready to, to give you some, some insight. So it, it doesn't have to be something that's just uh, done solo. But that's a, just an added little tip there that I had picked up on. So we're on the part for the quest. And this is where you need to come forth with your question, whatever it is that uh, you want to try and find fresh answers to. And don't fret too much if, um, as we say, this question isn't entirely clear at this point, or it hasn't come up straight away. Um, sometimes it will come up halfway through the quest um, workshop. Sometimes it will happen right at the end. Um, and if you are really struggling and you're just not sure what to land on um, to have as that repeating question that you're going to keep thinking about as you go, um, there's always the question that you can ask that is, um, streets, show me things I don't already know. And that is a great one to use if, uh, if you're stuck and you're looking for inspiration. But generally, I find it's often the other way and people have a bit of a list of different questions that they are wanting to think about and need to home in on, on one of them so that you can really use your, uh, your tune up senses now to help you with that. So um, think about things that are sort of a middle ground size of question. And when we say that, we mean not a large, meaty, what is the meaning of life? Um, and not something as small as what should I have for lunch or breakfast uh, when I get back after this event. You need something in the middle, something that's going to um, be perfect for you. So an example would be what do I need to do next for a project at work? Um, show me new ways to do X that you've been struggling with. Um, can I find a better way to do Y? Um, can I start to think about something that maybe I pushed out of my mind for many, many times because I just didn't think I had the bandwidth to do it. Maybe now you have a fresher perspective. So it's up to you to decide what's going to be the, the right quest for you and which fresh answers you want to try and tune in on. And it's as simple as taking your your feet, one in front of the other, letting your body do the leading, your gut instinct being drawn in one way or the other, and picking up on things that maybe you wouldn't normally. And let your body have this moment. Try and turn the head off. Make sure that that head and brain gets the break that it is uh, deserving on this and that the body can really take the lead and, and see what treasure you find. So you're going to filter your question um, throughout this, this uh, wander. So you need to have it clearly in there and keep going over it if you've decided on what your question is and see what signs are going to occur to you. And it could be anything. It could be something on, on a, a word on a passing bus. 
that um, starts you off on a different thought track. It could be the title of a book um, in your house on a bookshelf that you've not noticed for a while. It could be a smell that all of a sudden is drawing you to a certain area. A color that reminds you of something or just keeps repeating in a pattern as you're walking along. It doesn't really need to be a difficult piece. It doesn't need to be forced. It just needs to occur. So if nothing is obvious, um, slow down a little bit more and just be ready to know that it might not shout at you and it might not be immediate. And sometimes these things whisper. So just be open and ready to what comes along. Now we're gonna go for the wonder for 20 minutes. I'm gonna put the, the timer on again so you don't need to worry about when this time will be up, but I will give you a three minute um, countdown so that you know when we're going to be coming to the end of this. So let your imagination take you where it wants to. Um, enjoy this freedom. This is something that you rarely do, I would imagine, in your day-to-day -day lives. And notice what it makes you feel. And you will hear me again when we have our three-minute countdown. Enjoy.
Probando, probando. So I'll just uh, hop on now and let you know we're uh, just in the last three minutes of our wonder of the quest portion of our um, event today. So 
I will keep, let you keep sensing, keep wondering. Um, sometimes the, the, the best sensing is happening at the end when you're fully, fully tuned with all of your senses awake. So I'll be back to uh, put this to a pause and start the sharing in a couple of minutes. Okay, let's uh, just put a temporary pause on our uh, wandering for now. As you know, this is a practice you can go back to for the rest of your life at any time. And maybe after our sharing in a few minutes, you can uh, return to the quest <laughs> if it's still feeling as if it needs to be conquered. So I hope you had a, a great time. I loved following along on the streets that I could see. And it looks like a beautiful day wherever you are. So what we do in this part is we gather around and we do our sharing. And if we were in person on uh, some, one of the streets anywhere in the globe, we would probably be in a snuggy little coffee shop by now or a bar. But as we are virtual, we will uh, ask you to share some things that popped up in the chat. Or if you would like to share in person, please put your cameras on and, and indicate, wave, give me a little, little bit of a nod. Um, I'm hoping Carl give me a little nod right there with his uh, cap on. How did you and Ginger do, Carl? We did. We did really well. Uh, went for a, what would normally be our our evening routine walk, but there's um, there's an alleyway that is <clears throat> right right next to my house that I've never actually been down. I've kind of been saving it, and today was today was the right day to pick that pick that alley and and head down it. So we saw some surprises. It was pretty cool. So did you have anything that popped out you immediately seemed to answer your quest or did it need to burn a little? It definitely needs to burn a little. I think I, I, I knew to the outside time. It was, it was just a refresher after having been on Zoom for, for uh, about nine hours straight. So <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good break from that, as always. But, um, you know, right, <clears throat> right during the second tune in, uh, tune up, sorry, uh, or whatever it was called. Now I forget. Yeah, tune up. <laughs> um, when you and when you told us to slow down, there was the, there was a random garden in, in the alleyway that I came across that was beautifully maintained and had all kinds of plants I hadn't seen before. So I just kind of huddled there for for a bit. There was an anukshuk, which is an indigenous um, rock uh, structure in yep. Canada, and so as you probably know, and so I was looking at that for a while and. It was a cool little oasis behind an apartment building, tucked away, tucked away in a, in a cool spot. So that was a nice surprise. Isn't it when you find things like that and you're just like, oh, someone has cared and loved for this and created it not just for themselves, but for passers-by, which is always beautiful. Thank you. So hopefully you'll take that route again then. <laughs> yeah, <that. laughs> definitely. Thanks for sharing, Carl. I appreciate that. 
So let's see here, we've got any on the chat here? What came out that was surprising to you or gave you some kind of uh, answer? Would anyone like to share on the, uh, on the screen? Unmuted and brave. And uh, keep asking me questions if you like. <laughs> <laughs> When I first did this, um, I had a group that was in a coffee shop waiting for me and I ended up being last because I was also doing my quest. <laughs> I was leading as you do and getting carried away. And I found uh, a gaggle wanting to share. It was, it was wonderful. It was uh, almost uh, needing to take turns and get in the queue, which, which was lovely. But sometimes, it works and other times, as we have said, it, it takes a while. And I remember waking up the next morning and finding another clue that all of a sudden meant something different to me in a sort of the light of day on having slept on it. Mm -hmm. So that can always be useful as well. I, I'm not sure if you could tell, but during the, the, the call to slow down, I was almost being dragged by my dog. Yeah, I got pretty comfortable at a slow pace and just kind of watching the flowers, but every couple of seconds, the leash would yank at me a little bit and I'd be pulled forward and lunge down an alley or somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, we're just not used to going at that pace. It's it's <laughs> strange. And uh, I know reading reading the book and, and feeling that you should use the whole of the crosswalk, uh, crosswalk crossing to get across, oh, mm. felt so strange really almost as if you were holding people up but no it's that's what the pace should be if you're going to really pick up on your signs around you so did anyone see anything particularly that they normally didn't like but managed to see it with that sense of gratitude or just a different light to what they would have done normally Go on, be brave. Let's have a look. Oh, Holly's, Holly's got a message in the chat. I can read it for you if you like, Anna. Oh, thank you. Um, this is my first workshop quest. I should have gone for a walk prior. Perhaps mine is a virtual walk here right now. And the question I want to answer is, what is the world I wonder and what will I bring to it and get from it? So far, what I need to bring next time is bravery and being more organized. <laughs> I totally uh, understand that, by the way. What am I getting from it is inspiration and acceptance. Well, that's wonderful, Holly. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. And Holly, please share this wide. And uh, if you want to go off on and do your own even, I will encourage you to do so. I, um, when I took my first workshop, I thought people were going to be questioning, why would we want to go and do this? But I had some very willing volunteers straight up. It was great. So one of the things that I had noticed when I went uh, on my quest was I don't like garbage. I've never liked garbage on the street in any way. And my dad, when he was around, bless him, used to take me wombling when I was a kid. And if you're a Brit, you will know what the wombles are. They are these furry creatures that used to go and pick up garbage on Wombledon Common. It's a very old TV program. I'm definitely dating myself by telling you this. But anyway, we used to go wombling and um, he just gave me this um, I guess, love of making places tidy and picking up garbage and doing that kind of good thing for the community. And when I was on my uh, first quest, I started to see garbage in a very different light. And I was like, okay, some of this isn't as bad as it appears. And yes, I know it's on the street and it's not really where it should be. But I started looking through the lens, I guess, of, uh, of gratitude and realizing that yes, uh, a takeaway carton, we're lucky we have a very varied food scene in Edmonton. I live in a very multicultural area and I started to see all the different styles of food that were available within our stone's throw away. And I thought, you know what? This is gratitude right there. And I can see garbage in a different way. So I hope that all of you who are on your quest for your first time or on a workshop experience enjoyed it. I would highly recommend following um, the Street Wisdom organization and seeing what's in your area. But I will uh, hand off now back over to Benny, I believe, to just close us off. And thank you for the opportunity to uh, 
take you on a wander today. Thank you, Anna. That was that was awesome. That was really, really spectacular and, and so beautiful to hear the way that you weave your stories through uh, your your guidance. Yeah, it's lovely to hear about the kids and your experiences with street wisdom over over the years. And yeah, we're very lucky to, to have you. And um, you've almost got the perfect last name for this. <laughs> I had to say it. <laughs> Another dad joke. How many am I going to rack up today? So I'd just like to say to everyone in the group, uh, thank you for your participation, legends. And if you want to drop uh, one word into the chat today, just one word, one word's beautiful. Just one word. Uh, that would be amazing. Love to just see, see some words dropping in there. Just to sum up your experience, grateful. Thanks, Krista. Maybe something that you're going to take away, put in your pocket. Surprised, bright. Awareness, happiness. Cool, 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 cool. So if you'd like to, feel free to post this on your socials, wherever you do that social thing, and uh, tag Street Wisdom and Creative Mornings. And if you have any friends that you kind of just gone, oh, this would be really radical for them to, to check out over the next many hours that we still have going, uh, feel free to send them the link. And it's really simple to sign up um, because we have plenty more to come over the next 16 hours, I think it was, something like that, but a lot of, a lot of hours. Um, so the next Worldwide Wonder will start shortly. And uh, yeah, we'll be visiting our friends in the Atlanta Creative Mornings chapter. Cool. So stay tuned. Uh, if you need to log off, goodbye. Um, much love. And let me just say thank you so much from everyone from the team here. And um, yeah, couldn't have done it without you. <laughs>